It's the absolute big one. Now, I'm going to actually say three letters, MWC. And if you do not know what I'm talking about, you're in big trouble because this is by far the biggest mobility event in the world. So it happens in Barcelona, Spain. The entire Selguru team was out there covering this entire thing. And what it really does, it's very different from CES and IFA and others, is that this is not just a window to the future. It's a great showcase for brands to come up with new technology and new things. But this truly defines your next two years in your life with all kind of mobile devices, not just phones, everything from networks to your apps to, of course, the brands that will come out with their phones. So everything gets defined out here. The Cell Guru team is in Barcelona this week at the Mobile World Congress and we bring you all the phones that rule the roost at MWC this year. Huawei launched their premium foldable phone, the Mate X, and we take a look at this phone or tablet that has marked the arrival of foldable phones. Nokia has launched the most phones at MWC this year and are riding high on the number of cameras on the new Nokia 9 as well. We take a detailed look. LG launched the V50 ThinQ and the G8 ThinQ at Mobile World Congress. And we take a look at the hand ID tech they have got on the new G8. So let's get started, of course, with news of the week. And even though all the headlines are coming from the Mobile World Congress, India and brands in India really did not let up steam at all. So Samsung continued, of course, with their M series. M10, M20 did fantastically well. Now they have the M30. And then just to add a little bit of more vinegar and salt into the whole spice mix, they also added three more phones, the A10, the A30, the A50 all released within a day of each other. And then, of course, on the other side, Xiaomi. And this really is becoming an online battle between Samsung and Xiaomi and a pure war in every which way. So Xiaomi again reacted and came out with two more new phones. These were the 7 and the 7 Pro. So it's starting to become very interesting. Take a look at all the phones that got headlined here in India. While the Mobile World Congress made headlines across the world in Barcelona, back home things got heated up with two big companies offering two smartphones at competitive prices. Samsung added to its M line of phones with the Galaxy M30 which comes with a Super AMOLED Infinity U display, triple rear camera and a 5000 mAh battery with fast charge. The phone is aggressively priced at Rs 14,990 for 4GB RAM. Samsung also announced its all-new Galaxy A series targeted at millennials, the A50, A30 and the A10. The Galaxy A50 is priced at Rs 22,990 for 6GB RAM, the A30 for Rs 16,990 and the A10 for Rs 8,490. And Xiaomi has responded to the competition in this segment. Say hello to the Redmi Note 7 and the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Say hello to the Redmi Note 7 which comes with a gradient design, a 6.3 inch Full HD Plus screen, Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on front and back, a dot notch display and a 4000 mAh battery with support for Qualcomm Quick Charge 4. There is a dual rear camera setup with a 12 megapixel and 2 megapixel lens setup. The Redmi Note 7 will be available for Rs 9,999 for 3 GB RAM. And say hello to the Redmi Note 7 Pro which marks its global debut in India. It comes with a massive 48 megapixel rear camera with the top of the line Sony IMX586 sensor with a secondary 5 megapixel lens on the back. There is a 13 megapixel AI selfie shooter as well. With a 4000 mAh battery, this one is priced at Rs 13,999 for 4 GB. We'll be bringing you detailed reviews of all these phones on Selguru soon. So this is our coverage starting off now from Barcelona, Spain. Like I said, the entire Selguru team was out there. And we're going to start off with everything, including, of course, the big headline maker, which was the Huawei Mate X phone. But before we do that, let's just get down there and see what does the MWC look like this time. Sanjana's out there. And of course, I understand she has a big smile, but I hope it's not just because she's partying in Barcelona. Well, I am here, Rajiv, and of course I can't stop smiling. It is Barcelona, but more than Barcelona, it is the Mobile World Congress. I'm all ready to enter. I've got my badge on. 15,000 people I expected. As you can probably see behind me, there's a mad rush this time. This is Mobile World Congress 2019, and we are bringing you all the biggest updates from here.
And we'll start off, like I said, with the big headline maker. But do remember, while the Huawei Mate X phone may be the big headline maker, there are many others. In fact, I would say from every single brand, there were at least one or two serious headline makers. But we'll start our journey with Huawei and the Mate X. Now, we've already told you that 2019 will be defined by the fact that there will be fold, unfold phones. And Huawei took that forward with their phone. Samsung Fold now followed by this one. So what's the difference? If I can actually put it together in just one sentence, three screens versus two. So the Samsung actually has a screen outside and then there is a screen inside that unfolds and becomes a big screen. The Huawei actually works a different way. The front screen opens up and joins another screen and that really is a big difference. The other one is that the front screen is actually pretty big in itself, though it is a little narrow. Now, if you're not getting what I'm saying, here we go. Sanjana has the first phone. Yes, this is the biggest one from MWC. This is Huawei's foldable phone and it's right here behind me in this glass case. It's called the Mate X. And you know, when you fold out the phone, it's a tablet. When you fold it, it's a phone. So it's a whole new category that Huawei has finally established that foldable phones are here to stay. When, when you fold it out, it's about eight inches wide, you know, diagonally. And all the cameras are located on a side panel, which means there's no notch. It's a full view display and it's quite brilliant. So we're going to take a detailed look at this phone that's launched here and all the other big announcements that Huawei has made. If it falls, it's a phone. This is becoming the motto of smartphone companies in 2019 and giving the Samsung Galaxy Fold a run for its money is Huawei. Huawei has grabbed its share of headlines at Mobile World Congress 2019 with a thinner foldable phone with a bigger screen. This is a Huawei Mate X which comes with an 8-inch wraparound OLED display which makes our jaws drop with its sheer size. And what makes us gasp even more is that the Matex comes with a folded thickness of barely 11 millimeters. This is hardware innovation at its finest. We don't define particular phone or tablet. It is a, a 5G foldable phone. <laughs> so I think it's a phone, but phone with a great tablet experience. Huawei claims this is the world's fastest 5G foldable phone capable of blazing fast speeds and is powered by Huawei's super fast, super smooth Kirin 980 processor. It houses a large 4500 mAh battery. You also get an upgraded 55 watt version of Huawei Supercharge, which will juice up the Mate X up to 85% in 30 minutes. The power key on the side of the Huawei Mate X also houses a fingerprint sensor. Our hands-on experience with the Mate X made us marvel at its 6.6-inch screen on one side and another 6.4-inch screen on the other when folded up. When folded, the Mate X operates as a dual-screen smartphone. On unfolding, you get a mini tablet with minimal bezels. There is no gap in the fold and the display looks fantastic. The hinge comes with the same falcon wing design that Huawei is now famous for. Huawei claims that a lot of innovation and R&D went into perfecting the multi-layer hinge on a folding phone like this. Using the foldable display, and uh, you are still have the mechanical behind. If you fold it, you can like this. You can see it's uh, not in the line mm -hmm. because a lot, a lot of layer, layer uh, in the display and the mechanic together. So if you fold it, it's like this. So we have to design this part, hinge this part, to. Let this just uh, in the line. The camera setup is located in the spin hinge and we don't know the number of lenses yet, but rumor has it that the camera setup is at par with Huawei's mighty Mate 20. And be ready to sacrifice a king's ransom because Huawei is offering all this at the whopping price of 2,299 euros with 8 GB RAM and 512 GB of storage for the Mate X and releasing it from the middle of this year. That's more than 1.85 lakh rupees. But who said holding the future in your palm would be cheap? And we also got a glimpse at Huawei's second generation MateBook X Pro, which is a full view notebook with an artistic design and minimal bezels. This flagship notebook comes with a metallic unibody and premium sandblasted finish. What is noteworthy is a 13.9 inch ultra full view display with slim bezels on both sides, giving you a 91% screen to body ratio. Millennials are going to love this one for watching content. The notebook comes with up to 8th generation Intel Core i7 processor and NVIDIA GeForce MX250 GPU. You also get 4 speakers on the Matebook with Dolby Atmos sound. 
Multiple usage won't be a problem since the notebook comes with two USB Type C ports, one USB Type A port, new Thunderbolt 3 port, Wi Fi 6, and a fingerprint power button. And you also get a decent 7565 mAh battery. The new MateBook X Pro will be priced at around 2000 euros for the Core i7 16 GB RAM model. And that's not all. Huawei also unveiled the new MateBook 14 and announced the global availability for the MateBook 13 that was introduced at CES 2019 last month. While the MateBook 13 starts at almost 1000 euros, the MateBook 14 will sell at around 1200 euros. The new MateBook showcased at MWC Pack in an advanced Huawei share feature called One Hop. This lets you connect your Huawei phone to the laptop with a single tap. Images can be easily transferred with a tap of the phone on the laptop and even presentation text can be copy-pasted seamlessly. It seems Huawei has knocked it out of the park when it comes to innovation at MWC this year. Let's move on now to LG. Yes, the brand that we really respect for the incredible products that they actually come out with and always disappoints because they really don't know how to get the word and the marketing out for those phones. Now this is, okay, wait a minute, what's happening? Sanjana seems to be gesturing, uh, her hand seems to be going quite haywire. What's happening, Sanjana? Well, Rajiv, you're absolutely right. What I just did there was nothing short of magic. But of course, it is all explainable. I am at the LG booth at Mobile World Congress. This is the LG G8 Think that's right here in front of me. It's just been launched here in Barcelona. But what's really amazing is we've seen fingerprint ID. We've seen face unlock. But here's something we haven't seen to unlock this phone before. This actually is recognizing the vein pattern on my hands. Not my fingerprint, not my face ID. It's actually recognizing the vein pattern and then opening the phone. So I just put my hand in front of this phone and it unlocks by recognizing the vein pattern. But that's not the only thing that the LG G8 boasts of. It also boasts of some air triggers. Now we've seen gesture control and all of that, but this is something really out of, you know, Harry Potter. You do a couple of gestures, which I'll just show you in a bit. You do this, you do that, you do this, and you can change music, you can turn up the volume. It's all out of a Harry Potter mo sci-fi movie, if you please. But take a look at everything that LG has launched right here at Mobile World Congress. Move over Face ID, fingerprint recognition and passwords. LG has a new trend on the horizon with their newly launched G8 ThinQ for unlocking phones. This is hand ID that can unlock the phone without touching it. It recognizes the vein patterns on a person's hand and it uses the time of flight sensor in the front along with infrared sensors. And it even has a feature called Air Motion with which gestures can be used to turn up the volume, change the song and do a lot of other functions. We tried this and it did take some time to learn for us, but it was an interesting feature. LG claims the OLED display on this phone is the best in the world and that the screen on this phone is also a speaker. It uses the smartphone's display as a speaker diaphragm. This phone has a triple camera setup and a standard 8 megapixel front camera. But this was not all. The first wave of 5G phones were launched at Mobile World Congress this year. And this is LG's 5G phone. This is the LG V50 ThinQ that they launched, which is 5G compatible. The display on this phone stands out as it packs in a 6.4 inch QHD Plus OLED full vision display. Owing to the V-series design and style, the V50 is thin, slim and light, even in the hand, although a tad bit thicker than the V40. The V50 has the triple camera set up at the back with a wide-angle lens and a dual front camera. There is a large 4000 mAh battery and this phone even comes with the option of a second screen with an accessory. It attaches to the phone like a case and can be used to multitask. The 5G on this phone is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset, the first mobile chipset to bring 5G to flagship phones. The phone should be available in countries like US and South Korea in the first half this year, but the India availability of the 5G phone is not going to be anytime soon. Now let's move on to the brand that I think had the maximum number of phones that they've ever released or any other brand can, can't really compete and that of course is Nokia. Now they've had a huge spate of phones from the super budget to the mid to the absolute top. And it's the top that we'll really go to because this is a phone with a Penta camera. The Penta means five. Five rear cameras. Now, all the other specs and what it looks like, of course, Sanjana will take you through. But I have to tell you something very interesting. With this phone, Nokia has broken every rule. So normally, even if you have multiple cameras at the back, each lens has a different function. In this, all five lenses from aperture to the field of view to everything else, 
is exactly the same. So what it's really doing is each lens is capturing serious image detail, so a different kind of a contrast, everything else that you want, and it merges it all together to give you a picture with just about the best detailing that you can possibly imagine. So how does it work? What else does it have? Here's the story. One, two, three, four, five. Nokia has made us count the number of lenses on our fingertips this year at MWC. Say hello to the Nokia 9 PureView, which flaunts the Penta camera moniker and is the recent premium flagship from HMD Global. The Penta lens system has been developed in partnership with US-based startup Light and makes many tall claims. But for now, let's start counting. You get three monochrome and two RGB lenses, all with the same f1.8 aperture. In the front, there is a 20 megapixel selfie shooter. Other highlights include a decently large 5.99 inch 2K screen, an older Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset, and 6GB of RAM. It's evident that camera is the big USB here. The phone also claims to capture better HDR shots than the competition with all those cameras and its dedicated monochrome mode. The phone also happens to be part of Google's Android One program which means it will get all Android and security updates for up to two years without fail. HMD Global has priced the phone at $699. The Nokia 9 PureView comes with an under-the-screen fingerprint reader, face unlock, wireless charging and IP68 water resistance. And now let's find out a little bit more about the thought process behind the five lenses. Why the number five? First of all, what we did is that we had this curve in terms of like at cameras, how much better does the image quality get? And obviously you have diminishing return. And then the second thing you need to take into account is that how many color versus how many monochrome. So that optimization took a long time. Actually the five cameras was fairly obvious, but then how many monochrome, how many RGB? We even changed after our first build. We first we had three color, two monochrome, and then the second field we swapped. So it was really, uh, like I said, pioneering and driving for something new. And moving on from the premium to the wallet friendly, HMD Global and Nokia also unveiled a slew of more affordable options with old school features reminiscent of an era gone by. The Nokia OnePlus comes with a removable cover, a 5.45 inch touchscreen display, and is powered by a 1.5 gigahertz quad core processor. The phone packs 8 GB of internal storage that can be expanded. You also get an 8 megapixel primary camera along with a 5 megapixel selfie shooter. We love the fact that this budget option also comes with Android 9 Pie Go Edition and is powered by 2500 mAh battery. This one can be yours for $99 for 3 GB RAM. And moving on, the Nokia 3.2 comes with a 6.2 inch HD Plus display, a 2 day battery life, Android 9 Pie and a dedicated Google Assistant button. All for $169 for 3 GB RAM. Going up the price ladder but only slightly is the Nokia 4.2 with a dual rear camera, a 3000 mAh battery, Qualcomm Snapdragon 439 chipset, Android 9 Pie and an edge-to-edge -edge display with a selfie notch. This one is priced at $199 for 3GB RAM. And how can this list from Nokia be complete without a product that evokes nostalgia? The Nokia 210 is a feature phone from HMD Global which comes with a good enough battery for hours of snake playing. You get a 1020 mAh removable battery on this one. We'll be bringing you detailed reviews of all of Nokia and HMD's offerings on Cellguru soon. Let's move on now to Sony. And of course, I know immediately when I say Sony and the next phone, there isn't too much of excitement because the brand just doesn't have that momentum and inertia to take them through. But this is an amazing phone. Now do remember, Sony does great products. There is no two ways about it. Whether it's anything else Sony or even a Sony phone, they are fantastic. So this is a 4K OLED HDR and it has the most incredible screen ratio. So they call it a cinema wide or a cinema view. And that's because it's one of the first phones ever to have a screen ratio of 21 by 9. Now that's what you're really looking at when you build your own home theater or you go and see an absolutely fantastic movie in a great movie hall. 21 by 9, narrow, thin phone. Could this be the future? The focus, attention and spotlight is on smartphone displays this year at Mobile World Congress and Sony follows in on this theme with the Xperia 1. It boasts of the first ever on a smartphone 4K HDR OLED panel and measures 6.5 inches. The ratio on this phone is unique at 21 is to 9 and is supposed to be a cinema lover's delight. Sony says that most cinema is shot in this ratio which makes this a good phone for viewing. They didn't give us a hands-on with this phone but we did get to see the display quality. But the phone is more than just a screen. It comes with three cameras at the back and the Snapdragon 855 chipset. 
The mid-range phones launched by Sony this year are the Sony Xperia 10 and its larger sibling, the Xperia 10 Plus. Both feature the same 21 to 9 aspect ratio and come with a 6 and 6.5 inch screen respectively. There's no notch on the phones but it does come with bezels. The Xperia 10 sports a Snapdragon 630 processor and a 3GB RAM. The tall screens definitely feel like they need some getting used to but Sony's new phones are a breath of fresh air at a 5G and display ridden Mobile World Congress this year. We'll take a quick break right now on Selguru. Our Mobile World Congress coverage continues. Now let's move on to Xiaomi. Of course, they had a great presence out there at the Mobile World Congress and two phones really stood out. The Mi 9, which really is almost at flagship level for them, and the Mi Mix 3 5G version, which a lot of people really liked. While the Xiaomi treated Indian audiences with the highly anticipated Redmi Note 7 this week, the company also made headlines in Barcelona with its first 5G-ready smartphone, the Mi Mix 3 5G. With this 5G phone, you can get the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset, Android 9 Pie with Mi UI 10, a swanky 12-megapixel AI dual camera, which comes with noteworthy features like 960 FPS slow-mo video capabilities and flawless selfies. You get a dual front camera of 24 and 2 megapixels and we hear that the phone will come with optical image stabilization, face detection and HDR imaging as well. On the battery front, the Mi Mix 3 5G packs in 3800 mAh juice and to do justice to its massive 6.39 inch screen. We are told the stunning Super AMOLED display is protected by a durable scratch resistant glass. Another highlight of the phone is Xiaomi's patented magnetic slider, which can be used to answer calls or open the camera app. The slider also means that you get minimum bezels and no notch. The price for the Mi Mix 3 5G starts at 599 euros, which is a little over 48,000 rupees. A phone which is dressed to nines. That is the thought that came to our mind when we spotted Xiaomi's triple camera flagship, the Mi 9. Xiaomi did again what the company is now famous for flagship specs at an aggressive price point with the Mi 9. So now you get a triple camera set up with a 48 megapixel primary camera with a Sony sensor, 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. For all those selfies, there's a 20 megapixel front shooter. The phone comes with Qualcomm's latest mighty Snapdragon 855 chipset, Android 9 Pie with 20 watt wireless charging, a 6.39 inch Samsung AMOLED dot drop display, and a 3300 mAh battery. While the battery may be slightly underwhelming, the pricing is spot on. The Mi 9 is priced at about 449 euros for 6 GB RAM, which is a little more than 36,000 rupees. One thing we have to mention is that the Mi 9 is all curved design is inspired by the works of famed architect Anthony Gaudi. We love it when technology and architecture come together and the phone does have a touch of elegance to it. So that then is Selguru, our Mobile World Congress Series 1 show. Lots more coming up. Take a look at everything we have for you next week.